Back to the book, within a month of the war ending, 21st Army Group was required to supply junior officers for the 14th Army in Burma. Lippy, the commanding officer, decided that I should be one of them, and by then being intent on a military career, I was not inclined to argue. I would gain useful experience of jungle warfare, of which I knew nothing about. So, they're getting orders. Still a war going on in the Pacific. Oh, you wrapped up pushing from Normandy through Germany through their surrender? Guess what? We need we need people to go to fight in Asia. We need people in Burma. I was totally unprepared for the platoons, for the emotions that were unleashed immediately after I was deprived of 18 platoon. As a jeep took me away, from the battalion, a ghastly desolation engulfed me. I felt like a small boy on his way to a grim and unknown boarding school. The pleasures of commanding 18 platoon in peacetime were being denied me. And it's interesting. So he gets pulled away from his platoon and, and he goes in to talk about what happened to the guys that survived that he knew. And I, and I, th- I found this part to be fascinating in the how these people went back to normal life. Back to the book. Jim Kingston was demobilized in January 1946. And two months later, he returned to his civilian post with the Bristol Corporation Electricity Department. Retired in 1975, never married. Doug Proctor returned home to his wife and baby son in Nottingham in March of 1946. Found the transition from army to civilian life painless, returning to his accounting post in the coal industry. Owen Cheeseman, during the first few days of his demobilization, his wife died. Miserable and forlorn, he returned to his old job in Covent Garden and a few years later he met and married Bella who in his own words was a comfort and inspiration to him Charles Raven joined the London transport as a bus conductor later transferring to the clerical staff and rose by hard work and study to be a garage inspector Joe Thomas and George Harris went into the building trade industry in Bridgewater. Surprisingly, just incredibly normal paths after this incredibly not normal life. And and what happened to Sidney Jerry? So here's what happened to Sidney Jerry. Back to the book, arriving in England, On 9th July 1945, I reported to the holding battalion of the Hampshire Regiment at Westgate-on-Sea and was immediately sent on 28 days leave. After a night out in London with three friends, also Burma-bound, I telephoned my parents and found them away. Trapping them to Bognor Regis, I caught a train from Waterloo and went to see them. Staying at the same hotel as my parents were... Flight Lieutenant Jack Weatherly's widow, Peggy, and their three-year-old daughter, Anne, were staying at the same hotel as his parents. At once, a bond of deep understanding and affection developed between us. In August, an atom bomb was dropped, and so, at a stroke, my visit to Burma was rendered pointless. So, too, in my heart was a military career. I soldiered on in Libya and Palestine with the 1st Battalion of my own regiment for two more interesting years and finally was demobilized in May of 1947. Within a week of leaving the army, I attended a job interview. The managing director who saw me, a pale and thin-lipped man, was a business acquaintance of a relative. He eyed me coldly. 
slowly and precisely from his desk, he lifted a ruler, which he rudely pointed at my face. I understand that you made a slight name for yourself in the war. Be that as it may, people like you, Jerry, should remember that while you have been gallivanting around the world, most of my staff had remained loyal to the, com- to the company. If you can give me one valid reason why I should even consider you for any position, I should be interested to hear it. I nearly hit him. Now I wish that I had. Quickly grabbing my hat and umbrella, I rose and told him that if he was the last man in the world, I would rather starve than work for him. With that, I left. My heart pounding and a foul taste in my mouth, I walked aimlessly through miles of streets, wishing that I was back on some battlefield with real men. Soldiers, like 18 platoon.